Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War in which we're playing as Kothangian the Republic and led by Zathel Zarka but we got a bit of constitutional conspiracy constitutionalist Zas and Zag, thank you for coming on such short notice but I cannot leave these rumors unanswered Zalathel Zarka stared at his brothers Zazdrubal and Zago, his front two of supporting his chin. The sun had already set, but the Sufrit's office was well lit. Their father's portrait even receiving its own lamp, bringing even more attention to the centerpiece of the room. So what do we have on Zano Mzlakwadid and the Constitutionalists? No problem at all, Zath Zalathel. I summarized all the information we have at the moment. Zazdrubal received a clip bar from his saddlebag and gave it to Sufrit, whose eyes scanned the report. It seems the conspiracy is festered in every institution, the military, bureaucracy, and even among criminals. Especially in the West, Zal, Zago cut in, despite the serious subject. His voice was warm and seemed hardly concerned. Smugglers run the border between Hippogriffs and Media. And the states of Tefemene and Sivmarias. Zalathel sighed. Here I thought we had dealt with the Zano in the election. And citizens of Kolfeg rejected his lies. Now he thinks they want him back. Zago grimaced, treading, or threading carefully. With its embrace from brother. Mzalakwid, uh, claims that her family's destroyed the old republic. This makes supporters a mix of nostalgic romantics and radical students, and knows we can't touch him as long as he hides in an Anaza across the border. Zazdrubal Zalafel tried to contain the angry welling up inside his core. Prepare operations for reinforcing the western garrison. Zago, I want you to investigate who Zana's supporters are and what his plans is. The two Zarka brothers nodded, and one last thing, no word about this to Zephold. Zazdrubal and Zago looked a bit uneasy at the exclusion of their sister, but they left the Sufrit's office without protest. The exile can bark, but can he bite? Leading on the Tsar said legacy. The Zarka family is more than just a powerful political family. Too many Koth, uh, Kothang... I'm going to say his name wrong. Kothanginians. The Tsar kids are exemplars of power and glory of the country's history. By invoking the family name, we were able to appoint some loyalists to important bureaucratic positions which should allow some political momentum to do with the hampered economy and the unrest in the provinces. And which we have Kothvin unrest. During the Storm King's invasion, the zebras of the northeast, the eastern provinces of Kothval took their mountains with their belongings, hiding what they could from the greedy Yeti. After the Storm King's death, the celebrations quickly turned sour as it became clear that Kothag had been too weak to prevent or protect Kothav, Kothval. The rich and powerful Kothangian landowners justified the rule by claiming to be the defenders, yet they had followed in this duty. So, what right did they have to keep the common zebra in chains? One rebel leader, Zeshmunazash Zerutid, Managed to rally the Kotvins to his cause and in his continuous war resistance against the Kothangian government. If an idea with the Rennes in the region, it could spill over to a full blown rebellion. The murder rise. Over the past 24 hours, the protests which initially began in the universities in response to the Balazar Zatid's murder has been intensified and spilled outwards, with countless angry young Kothangians taking to the streets. These protests have very quickly morphed into protests directed against the Zarasid government. Many have latched onto a ridiculous conspiracy theory that because Balazar criticized the government prior to his departure, that he was in fact assassinated by Kothangian agents. Believers in the theory therefore blame Zalathel for his death. In major cities, the protesters have attacked government buildings and are demanding political reform and for an end to the Zarkid administration. However, local police forces have been, unable, have been able to quell the unrest in most places, although the underlying issue remains. Until things die down, we can use this as an opportunity to hunt down dissenters and lock them away before having they have a chance to stir up any more trouble in the future. This can work to revenge and murder and sick Um uh, Professor Balazar's attire at the University of Kotheg was found dead yesterday, boring at the archaeological dig site in the ancient Kothangian city of New Kotheg, in modern-day Sikimian. The professor was well known among the Kothangian academic and archaeological communities and was a forerunner in the study of early Kothangian civilization. He traveled to the island of Scarlet and Sikimian to continue his work of excavating the remains of his town. Early reports said that he was found having been beaten, strangled, shot, and stabbed with his own pickaxe. Local authorities have yet to bring forth any suspects, but the Sikimianese authorities are sure that they are treating the matter with the utmost emergency. Kothag's ancient history in Griffonia has always been controversial to many Griffins, who reject the idea of any substantial Zebrakin civilization on the continent, or even deny any meaningful interaction between our two worlds in the past. This flies in the face of contemporary evidence that Professor Balazar Zatid and many others would, in both Kothag and Griffonia, have uncovered, along with historical accounts and events, such as the famed Carthinian general Gripio Zebrakanus, who conquered the island of Scarlet for the Carthinian Republic over 1500 years ago. The professor's death has sparked outcry and mourning across Kothag. Protests have already started in the universities, and there are many in the Senate who are calling for a firm response to such crime. Sikimian must apologize and give us full compensation for his crime. Looks like we don't really deal with stuff over here. Um, what are they doing here? Yeah, the parish of Sikimian. We must trust Sikimian handle this well. Demand compensation and apology? Well, we'll see. This is on A historical as well, so we'll see what happens. Um, here are those national spirits, though. Legacy of the Storm, which is very bad. We also have what? Army of Mercenaries, which is eh. 
the parishes of Sikimion apologizes, and we have political instability as well, which is god awful, and factionalism, which looks like fun. Well, it's Zarka's crossroad. The traditional start of the Koltengian political year was a speech by one of the Sufrites before the Senate. As Elethel Zarka was the only Sufrit for now, it was he who stood proudly in the Orlstrom, like a captain staring out over the sea, although the leader of Koltheg knew his place was more treasonous than Zargon's domain. Many of the sins were old and had seen his father deliver speeches from the stand. A few of them have been colleagues of Zalathel's grandfather, even. The Sufrit quickly glanced at his brothers, who sat on the first row of benches and then at the old president of the Senate. And Zebra nodded and gave permission for the Sufrit to speak as an honored guest of the ancient institution. Kothangians, esteemed members of the Senate, as we stand at a crossroad, to our west is the road against which my fathers often caution, a warning I will repeat today. The Sufrit's eyes shone proudly as his voice bellowed powerfully throughout the chamber. Push on by foreign agitators and jealousy, there are those who call our noble republic a sham, and who try to call the Zarka family despots. I'll not stand up for accusations of tyranny, though, when remember all life under Yeti occupation. Members of approval went through the Senate. The tyrant did not banish, we drove him out, and it cost us dearly. The Zarka's blood for the republic, and we shall not let that sacrifice be undone by the so called constitutionalist agitators and saboteurs. The soup fret let the cheers for the non constitutional senators die down before continuing, trying to disregard the cold stare from his sister Zephold. Then to the east we find the opportunist. While we were weak, they armed themselves, called Ven separate to terrorize their economy and honest citizens, while some in this chamber called for dialogue and peace branches. Honorable Kothangians, there's but one answer to treason. Zarka supports Roar, and as Elethel grinned, basking in the glory, I see a path before us, venerable senators. Shown by my father's sacrifice, it leads to prosperity and glory. Walk with me, and I shall lead Kothag to a new golden age. It took minutes for the president to bring the senate to order, but Zalathel, Zalathel had acquired the momentum he needed. The Zarka dynasty stands at the helm, and the parish of the Sikimian apologizes. An official statement by the Sikimianese uh, ambassador in Kothag. Published in the major newspapers, he apologized for the murder of a Professor Balazar Zatid. The Sikimianese Government proposed a government allowance for the victim's family and a plaque to be placed on the crime scene commemorating the professor's contributions to understanding our shared histories. It seems that this generous gesture has caused calm tensions across the country, and the press has already started speculating that about closer trade ties and a new appreciation for the shared history uh, between griffins and zebras. Let's put this behind us, shall we? Uh, that's actually pretty good. Azizel Quart Zalhumid, Royal Magnate. That's not bad either. Compassionate Grandee. Smooth Talking Charmer. That's not bad too. I guess we already have no super. No Kosufrit. Oh. This is pretty good, too. Yeah. Maybe we lose some political power, but that's okay. Slave. Ooh, we have a slave based economy. Can I get rid of this and add someone else, maybe? Um. Zano Mzelkotid's Rebellion. Out of the Storm King's invasion, the son of an influential West Kothingian landowner, Zano Mzel Khatid, directly contested Zalathel Zarka in the elections for the position of Sufret. In spite of the result that have already been decided before the election, his slow campaign was able to gather significant support among the urban youth in the popular assembly. After the election and Zalathel Zarka's overwhelming victory, he declared that the election was rigged and invalid. But before the authorities could crack down on him for deciding unrest, he and several supporters had fled across the borders of the media. We cannot wait for a moment uh, to believe that this would be the end we see of him, and we need to prepare for a possible uprising led by his supporters. Dangerously high. Correct on students. Faction support. We have high support for the Scientifids. Science group. Military. Landowners. I like the landowners a lot. Loyalties, 50%. Constitutionalists. Harmonites. I kind of want to go to the landowners. So, the, the Sufrits cannot rule alone. Behind every leader, there are powerful political groups keeping them in power. The Zarkids that ruled over the cold thing for decades could have power with the aid of the scientifids and the military. During the time, the landowners grew rich and powerful and now extend strong control of their huge tracts of land. Recently, two organizations have been rising in popularity. Constitutionalists, with wish for a return to democratic government, and end of the Zarkas. The Harmonites go a step further, seeking to bring radical changes to the nation and rebuilding them along harmonic lines. Loyal factions will provide bonuses to the nation, and disloyal factions will grind them to a halt. These bonuses or penalties increase with their power. However, powerful factions may push their own agendas, even or even plot against the Sufrit if they are disloyal. I kind of want to see what we can do about this stuff. No co Sufrit? Well, what if we did something else? Like, if we get consumer goods anyways, I might just choose this one. Or not. Well, it's only negative 5%. I guess we'll do this one first then. Curtail this power, lose stability, reduce loyalty. Appease them. Increases loyalty by 10%. I like the appeasing the military, too. We lose the weekly pony power. Appease landowners. Increases more loyalty. Power is medium. A faction with very high power will slowly lose loyalty. And disloyal faction can cause a coup. So, what are you going to choose? 
Um, bread or stick politics. Decrease the potential strength of the revolt. Political chief. That's not bad. Seems like we should probably go that way. Bread or stick politics. Uh, Zamilkar Zarka's bread or stick politics was an informal system of patronage. Less influential chiefs, landlords, and other community leaders would get bread or other help for the people in return for backing Zamilkar whenever he needed them, while also who re those who refused would be forced out of politics. The Storm King broke a lot of these informal bonds, and it'll take some time to reforge them. Cool. The protests have been crushed. An impressive job as always. Uh, Miss Zanid. Zala fell smirked at the figure in the corner of his office. We kept to the shadows. His father had used the elusive zebra's talents before surgically removing dissenters. And Zimsal had not disappointed this time either. Thank you for your patronage, Mr. Zarka. Although there is more for you, you must know. The shadowy figure waited for the Sufer to give her full, uh, give her his full attention. Relishing the moment of superiority where she knew the, and the most powerful zebra in Koltek did not. The soon protests were coordinated centrally. We expected the ringleaders were planning to protest the movement. They would have, a, have an excuse to do so all across Koltek. It's possible one of your enemies may have sought to weaken your rule in time for triumph and return us, perhaps. A suggestion lingered in the air for a moment before Zalathel responded. Of Zano, of course. No doubt fun about those arrogant half-breeds and heiress. We're actually losing political power. Oh, God, no. Perhaps, perhaps not. Although further investigation would be needed, the sword which the police would not be allowed to handle. Zalathel grimaced at the Mathod. It was better that he did not know what Zana did. For a moment, he wondered if his father had ever asked. All right, do it. The Sufret's determined answer did not stir the cloak figure. I must mention that we have to make considerable expenses. There are 127 pairs of eyes to avoid after all. Zana referenced the ancient judicial institution of the Republic, ever watchful for foul play. This made Zalathel hesitate. If he had to borrow from the treasury, had, his other priorities might have to be postponed, and there were no telling if Xana would uncover anything useful from her investigation. And for that at the moment, you have what you require? Oh god. Um, I like the loyalty. Each level power. This is more political power because it's a good gain, gain factor. Well, Trenchman's not bad. 6% is okay, though. Artillery attack and defense, old guard, daily command power, arm experience, gain, organization, actually that's not bad. Maneuver, speed. Yeah, we're gonna go with defense. We'll have what you need. We're introduce political chiefs. The regional divides of Kothangian and society are not a new phenomenon. Zamilkar Zarka dealt with this problem by assigning political chiefs, a local office used to undermine dissidents, which proved effective. While we lost political control after the Storm King's invasion, the system collapsed. But we can bring the chiefs back from retirement to reassert control over the countryside. Should be a good thing. The plan is Zapsa. Zala fell Zarka flipped through the inform information Mr. Zana had brought to him. It took a correspondence, which must have been well, well hidden and only given to the most trusted leaders of the opposition. This operation was called the Plan of Zapsa, orchestrated by Zana Mzelakid himself. List of contracts, codes, detailed maps, hidden war caches, or weapon caches. The plan even came with a date, the first date of August 1007. The Sufret cannot help but be impressed by the intricacies of the plan, and many countermeasures kind of to discovery. Zano's plan was like a ship which could seal off bulkheads if it was breached. Zalathel looked up at the shadowy figure who he imagined must be grinning under the hood. How did you get all this, Zanon? This is incredible. If the lucid zebra was gloating, she managed to hide it well. Zargon, the dark one, demands I do not share my secrets. Was Zanon just being esoteric for the sake of it, or did she really worship the dreaded Lord for the Deep? Either way, her answer was enough to stop Zalathel from prying. With this, we should be able to root out the Constitutionalist conspiracy. The eldest Zarka smirked, imagining the despair of his old opponents as his elaborate scheme unraveled before his eyes. The cloak zebra only nodded her head, just enough for it to be visible, but before leaving the Sufret's office. What about this information could use? Yeah. Reshuffle the Western garrisons. Guarding the board with Hippogriff and occupies the medium. It has been regarded as an easy arrangement for years. A zebra in the area are usually loyal, unlike the meddlesome cult fence, however. Rumors of Zeno's return fired up local youth, and a lazy garrison is nothing doing, doing nothing to stop the rallies. Replacing the garrison with veterans from Coltville will teach these foals the strength of cult egg. Sufri Batrum Zarias. Maximum command power. Increases military power. Kofrit Zaran Zorel. Ooh, you get more political power, which I like a lot. Baltazar Zakbar. Science. And landowners, I like that. Secular education. Zarza. Oh. Religious education. National Reconstruction Program. That'd be good to get rid of.
Improve mercenary hiring standards. It's not bad either. Pro build a professional army. I kind of like this one the most. Military power. Go very militarist, maybe? We are the constitutionalists. Prison inspection. Mm. Strength is high. If we get to root them out, we don't get any political power. God dang it. Crack them down. Well, you know what? Let's go and go here. Let's try this one. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Kol Sufrit Batrun Zaryas. Uh, as even the true Kol Thengi and Prashans. Batrun Zaryas is Zarka's favorite pick for Kol Sufrit. As a general, Zaryas openly disfavors the scientific clique, but his widespread popular support among most civilian soldiers. Appointing Batrun as Kol Sufrit would only help not only help prepare the populace for the conflict, but also placate the military for the time being. I do apologize once again for mispronouncing everything here. I'm not very good at pronouncing stuff, as you can tell. Everyone has their price. Oh. Your more political power would be nice immediately. Troubles, troublingly. Or trouble, troublingly. Uh, reports indicate that there are many in the army who harbor sympathies towards the constitutionalist cause. Zarius believes a round of bribes will be the most effective way to guarantee the loyalty of their soldiers and generals, after all. Self-interest is a more powerful motivator than any lofty ideal. you are going to read them out as fast as we can. Oh, strength is only medium. That's pretty good, actually. Um, our divisions are okay, though. What do we even have here? Uh, go low, go high. We have Somor Magnit, which is okay. Tadbar Magnit, which is slightly better. And Sacred Bond. Sacred Bond. Chargers. Oh, this is really cool, actually. Oh, well, the Cold Thin Republic. It's going to give us a lot of issues here, ain't it? So now we're actually using political power, which is good. Oh, they're very high, huh? Slowly lose loyalty. We'll see. Um, restore the rural guard. It's not bad. Reduces military loyalty by 10%, increases land or loyalty. Huh. It's not bad to grab that one, but can we get over here at all? Oh, Civil War, huh? Restore the Royal Guard. First established as an official constabulary by Zamil Karzarka 981, the Royal Guard was a ruthless and efficient organization, um, primarily responsible for eliminating unrest in the countryside. However, they dis disintegrated in the chaos that followed the Storm King's invasion. It was clear that this organization would be needed once again if we were to maintain order in the East. Pretty much. I guess we might get cooed. Actually, do we see that? Military? Supremacists? Non aligned, constitutionalists, harmonic, communists. Yeah, we'll see. Nice. So that's the case. Move them. Appease them. Well, they're still very high. Loyalty is not super high, though. Loyalty is zero. Constitutionalist uprising. Despite the early hours, a small crowd of zebras gathered in the border city of Anaza and Zumidia and Zapsa. Her neighbor in Kothag across the river. From Zumidia, a nervous hippogriff police officers watches a bearded figure. Made his way across the bridge amidst cheers from a band of supporters across the bridge. The stallion in question was Zano Nzelakatid, leader of the Constitutionalist Army, whose banner was flying over to Zapsa now. He smiled at the crowd but seemed taken aback. Once over the bridge, the politician was quickly approaching by two generals Zar uh, Zarvad Orzagid and Azurazal Azarago. Good morning, friends. How pleasant to finally meet you on the free Kothangian soil. Zano exclaimed to the crowd before turning his attention to the generals. It is a pleasure to see both of you could make it to our planned meeting. Tell me, how are we doing? Azarago hushed his voice. The Zaps' plan seems to have been foiled by Zark. I don't know how he managed to do it, but most of our key supporters are locked up. At the moment, we hold Sivmarius and Tefemanai. General Orzagid nodded, speaking softly as well. Despite many generals joining our cause, we too had to resort to using these irregulars from the mountains to overrun the garrisons. We, they were heavy battles. He took a deep breath. Mr. Nzelkatid? No doubt Zark will bring in troops from the east. I suggest we organize our forces and push towards Hippo Hippon. Zan, however, seemed distracted by uncouth entourage of the generals, shaking hooves and speaking with them, which caused Orzagid to grin. He's uh, much at home among bandits as he among citizens. 
Azarago just smirked and gave other generals a pat on the shoulder. The zebra understand the meaning of freedom, Zarved. We still have the upper hoof when it comes to morale. Every optimist, Azurazal or Zagid, try to pull up a small. Zalathel Zarka was a skilled opponent on the battlefield. The rest of the rebellion was up and up for battles at least. Oh, crush your troubles. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, I guess I wasn't expecting a civil war when I first was thinking about this, but whatever. Hey, substance abuser, like me? No, we don't abuse substances. We just super abuse them. Armchair general, he's like me. The gunslinger, eh? Yeah, sure. Why don't you be very aggressive? How many divisions they got? Up to thirteen, huh? So not bad. Um, the medium. Constitution uprising, cold fake. War bonds. Not bad. How about we go in? And see what happens. Mm, cut them off and uh, have a good time. Very nice. See, partition, huh? Zinisut? Ah, keep them in place for now. Hit ball and shoot out. Mr. Zerdid, you are under arrest on suspicion of treason against the Republic. Come on now, we'll come in. The voice of Hippon's chief of police thundered, barely muffled by the closed doors and windows. I'd like to see you try, Abzaman Zerdid. Looked around the lobby of the Port Authority building. His compatriots were staring at the haphazardly barricaded door from behind desks and under the cover. The zebra loaded his gun as a loud knock made the door shake in its hinges. Remember what you are fighting for, called Thingians. The bureaucrats spoke loudly. Today we defend the Constitution. Today we fight for a Republic. Death to Zarka. Wood splinters filled the room as the door broke down and the police stormed through. The first zebra and barely set hoofs inside before being ridden with bullets, but police quickly responded with smoke grenades and gunfire of their own. Police Sergeant Zana grinned. The constitutional troubles were better armed than they had suspected. The zebra reloaded her Garcano Ocho's Orchzor, but then a scream next to her made the sergeant look to the side, where the chief of police collapsed. With a jump and a duck, Zanza sat next to him. Let's get you out of here, sir. Zanza pressed the chief's hoofs against the wound. Negative, Zanza, don't let these bandits escape for my sake. Her superior coughed up blood, his voice wavering. Screw that, Zanza's retort was cut short by a fire erupting in the building. Making her stand back up, what in the deep were they doing? Then the officer saw a dozen galloping shadows advance her, but were they charging? The rest of the squad seemed as stunned as her. Gun them down now, don't let them get close into melee. Zanza fired a rifle at the Constitutional to enforce her order. It was enough to snap her colleagues out of it, and the rebels dropped one by one. She ordered a zebra to get to the fire department while the rest investigated the bodies. With her heart still racing from the fight. Uh, Zanza looked down at her chief, but it was too late. His eyes were closed and his body was still. She cursed and cursed until another officer snapped her out of it. Zerdin is here, Sergeant. Looks like they were out of ammo. Seems like every pencil pusher fights to the death now. Send a dispatch to Kothe. These are not just bandits anymore. I'm glad we have them circle prison inspection. Zasdrubal Zarka smiles as he tried to pass a cell block in Kothe's prison. This block was completely full of rebels. A delegation of senators and judges followed him through the prison, taking notes and asking questions to the guards and inmates. Then, no matter how much the senators from the Constitutional faction were proud of the prisoners, they were not getting any answers confirming rumors of the maltreatment. Whenever the politicians seemed to be close to getting a political prisoner to talk, they'd tense up and refuse to elaborate. Up in the rafters above the block, a zebra in a dark cloak shadowed the delegation, flashing a light to any prisoner thinking about talking to make them look up. The mere sight of Zimsal Zana was then enough to quell the rebellious thoughts. Eventually, the delegation ended the tour and one of the senators came up to Zalasdrubal. Congratulations, General Zarka. The prison seems to be working adequately, although we have some concerns about its capacity. We hope most of these new prisoners will only be temporary residents. Zaka responded with a polite smile. Naturally, Senator, once the situation's calmed down, as I said at the start of the inspection, rumors of abuse or even worse are just that. Rumors. You have to forget about 127, General, the judge chimed in. The speed at which you found out these rebels is impressive, but we found nothing to indicate unlawful interrogation on your part. Look forward to a report. Your praise is a compliment to the guards and the ward, and your honor. Now please let us end this inspection in a more pleasant setting. Zasdrubal Zarka led the delegation outside with a smirk, prompting Zanid to come down from her vantage point, as Spartan prisoners looked defeatedly at the leaving political politicians' backs. You played along so well, Foles, first by telling me about your friends, and now by keeping me my secrets. None of you ought to go to the deep with me tonight. The leads are dry now, and the prison's full. No stability. Yay. Overwhelming military influence. Curtail military power. Well, if we have to. Family reunion. 
The town hall of Zapsa repurposed into a military base by the Kothingian army as they rendered up the last bit of constitutional stragglers. Zastrubal and Zalathel Zark were going through the latest developments as there was a knock on the door. This better be important, the zoo Fritz shouted as he looked up from his desk. Family, business, brother. The jovial voice of Zago responded from the other side, to which Zas Jubal opened the door to a smiling Zago supporting a winced Zaphod. Her admiral's dress uniform stained red on one of her legs. The two entered, and the general closed the door behind them. Zalathel got up, sighing in relief at the sight of his sister. Holy Zal, Zalathel, are you right? We have been right sick. The, fi the mayor sat down on a chair, resting her leg as she looked around the room. Figures you'd be worried, more worried about me than the rest. I hear you captured Zan and the rest of us. Zas Jubal stared daggers at his sister. Us? Does family mean nothing to you, Zaf, the legacy of our father? Do not lecture me, Zas. I know full well what I did. I fought for democracy, I, a republic. Where creatures are free to choose their politics, a country without slavery. Zalathel stood in between the two and looked towards Zephod. And how many paid the ultimate price for your idealism, Zaf? How many students with bright futures? How many brave soldiers? While all of us around us, our enemies gather strength. Cold thinkage is really. Exactly what father of such prevent? Zago chapped in. His tone soft and his words considered. It does not matter now. We are together again. There's still a lot to do. Zastrubal sighed, hanging his shoulders and stepping toward his sister. Let's go home, Zaf, and save our bullets for real enemies. I'll forgive you if you promise to work with us. Zaf had sighed, but declined her brother. I need time, I'm sorry. The civil war's over, but it's time to go home. Constitution? The armament, huh? Zarkid's Constitution. With all political offices filled, it's time to fully return to political normalcy. Zalathel is accused of being a dictator and the rule being unconstitutional. The same accusations were heard during the father's reign, but with the majority of support in the Senate, Zalathel can do what Zamilcar, Zamilcar did not make his extensive powers enshrined in the Constitution and many times. Or many ties. The uh, siblings approach a small, well kept house on the uh, host coast of Clotherobus, looking overlooking the bay. An elderly ze zebra selling was sweeping the mosaic patio and a smile to the fore. Ah, oh, young masters, what a joy! I shall set the teapot go on the pavilion. All four thanked the servant who was well with the mother for the entire lives before continuing on. Zaydara Zarko was sitting on a sofa watching waves rolly softly, rolling against the beach, her cane standing next to her. She gave a warm smile to her children when she saw them approach. My rays of sunshine, I'm glad to see you all together again. Out of the forest, Zastrubal seemed the most embarrassed by his mother's sweet words. Mother, now is not the time. Zago quickly intervened with a smile, as sweet as honey, we need your help. The aging zebra's eyes lingered on Zaphod, and she gave a nod, knowing nod. I can tell you cannot uh, let go of what has happened. All it took was a moment under her gravitas for her heart to go open. The very same empathy which she had drawn her father to her. Their father to her. Zalathel looked down, seeking words to justify himself. She could have ruined her father's legacy. She could have died. Zaidara nodded softly at her, uh, the, at her eldest. She could have. Absolutely could have, Za Zaphod. Her eyes now went to her daughter who was standing back. Zephod, to fight for your beliefs is to be a Zarka, but that time is not past. A deep sigh betrayed a story passed behind those words. Your brothers need you now, and sometimes a small step gets you further than a great leap. Her mother's words caused Zephod to melt, and she hugged Zaydara softly. I'll try, I'll try, she whispered, while her mother's weak grip comforted her. The rest of the day, the Zarka family spent sipping tea and eating falafel. Zaydara, uh, smiling at tales as Zasdrubal's battles as if it were his escapades with a wooden sword, and Zago's boasting of foreign contacts as if he made a new friend. She compared Zelal. Zalal fell to his father when he announced his plans, making the zebras gleam, while Zephod observed her mother's way, softly smiling to herself as she embraced her family once more in her heart. Family is the most important after all. Huh. Zarkid, Zarsid, Zars Zarkid or Zarsid? Uh, persecute the opposition, appease the opposition. Kind of want to go with that one, because we have got a lot of things to do here. Um, divine sacrifice, demand war reps. Build debate, regain naval supremacy, invite foreign military advisors. I do like that quite a bit. For weapons, reinvigorate commerce. Because I know this nation has a lot of different routes, supposedly, so. Arms trade is very nice. Elephants of steel, I like that. Steel elephants. Blood is thicker than water. Rise of mass media. Um, the Elder Agreement. Oh, pursue national autarky. Oh. Um. Zeron Zorel. Well, we should have gone that way if we want to pursue national autarky. Limit exports. Oh, that's interesting. Should have looked at this side earlier. Slave based partial mobilization. Oh, that would have been so much better. Are you getting mining sites? Elder Sea Agreement. Um, the severity of the Elder Sea Agreement, if approved by the Wingbarians, will depend on balance of total factories between us and them. At current balance, the result will be the Elder Sea Agreement, less stability, more cap. Oh. Com plantations. Has been signed. Has been signed. Interesting. Very interesting to see what we have here. Phase out slavery. The fruits of partnership. Well then. 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, fortify the border. The civil wars are taking place. So, so much for that. One super above all. Dreams of United Zonikio? Zonic oh. Zinuel Zinzuel Zidalid. The priest who started the revolt against uh, Quagatai in 825 famously declared that all Zonikin zebras should be free not under a single banner. Although he was unable to make it a reality in his own time, the idea of United Zonika has not been forgotten. But unfortunately, I apologize. This is all the time that we have for today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And see you tomorrow. As we'll see what else we're going to do with the Kothangian Republic. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.